Welcome to Animal X. And a horror story from days gone by. In 18th century France, during a three-year period, almost 300 people were killed and eaten by a creature with a terrifying appetite for human flesh. What it was remains a mystery to this day. It was as big as a cow and claws the size of a man's hand. Her father went looking for her and found the gruesome remains. It could have been an animal. It could have been a serial killer. An animal of unparalleled ferocity? Or a killer in wolf's clothing? Join us as we unravel the mystery of the Beast of Javadan. Stranger things in heaven and earth. And you're about to see one of them. Just be careful. The Beast of Javadan's reign of terror began on a June evening in 1764. A peasant girl was tending her herd of cattle. A terrifying creature bounded at her from the forest. But before its deadly fangs could get at her throat, her herd charged straight at it, sending it back into the woods. Back in the village, the terrified shepherdess offered a strange account of the attacker. She said it was the size of a cow and covered with red fur. It supposedly had a white stripe on its chest and a long tail with a tuft of fur at the end. A puzzling description, for sure. But whatever it was, the predator was for real. It was it a monster or a murderer? <laughs> the Animal X Natural Mystery Unit is in France to explore a 250-year-old mystery. Such a beautiful country. Such a dark past. Dan and Natalie are on their way to the southern part of the country, to the Javadan region, beast territory. The beast of Javadan is no myth. Records of the day show that something was responsible for the horrific deaths of dozens of people. Not long after that first attack, dead bodies started showing up in the hills of Jevedan. The beast seemed to have a taste for women and children, killing them in a variety of ways. But the end result was always the same. Its victims all had brutal bite marks around the head and neck. Some had their heads ripped off. It gobbled up their entrails and left the rest of their bodies for other wild animals to eat. No wonder the locals were terrified. This is the area where the beast actually killed some of its victims. And some of the beast victims were shepherds and shepherdesses. You can imagine if they knew the beast was in the area, they would have hidden away in little places like this, trying to escape the beast. The story of Marie Jean Vallée is one of the most famous regarding the beast. Her and her sister were on their way to a neighbouring farm when they were attacked. Marie managed to fight off the beast with a lance, stabbing it in the chest. It's then said that the beast put its paw up to its chest before running off. Memorials like these are now the only reminder of the terror that once gripped the countryside. Keep in mind, my darlings, this was all happening at a tumultuous time in French history. Much of the country was starving. The peasants loathed King Louis XV and were leaving the church in droves. Whispers of revolution were in the air. As the killings increased, the church called the carnage the work of God, with the hope of bringing people back to the fold. Oh, it worked. Soon the pews were packed with villagers pleading for deliverance from the beast. Unfortunately, their prayers went unanswered. The beast continued its rampage, 
and still no one knew exactly what kind of creature was hunting them. We've got witness descriptions. But what kind of animal fits the bill? Based on the beast's M.O., let's take a look at the suspects. First, the lion. Or at least a big cat. Back in the 1700s, there were no native lions in France. King Louis XV kept a zoo. And it was fashionable for him and aristocrats to import exotic animals from Africa or Asia. But there are no records of any of these animals escaping. The same with panthers and cheetahs. Fabulous hunters and as swift as the wind. But again, my darlings, there were none of these big cats in Europe. And no record of anything like that having escaped. And anyway, their mouths were too small to do the kind of damage inflicted by the beast. And what's more, the witness accounts don't describe the beast as a cat.